Well, I'm Matt from Metalworks. We came up to Art Morrison to check out the new C10 chassis uh, they've been working on developing. This is one of the first ones being produced. I have Scott here that works at Art Morrison, gonna go over some of the details about this chassis, kind of give us a little more information on it. So Scott, on this chassis, I understand there's a lot of new features on the front end or a lot of things that are unique to this particular chassis versus the old chassis you've done. Can you explain some of the features that have changed in this versus the old ones? Yeah, yeah. So what we did is took a new approach. We know that that generation of truck got a lot heavier mm -hmm. and there's a big market for guys that want these things sitting really low, want excellent handling, and that creates some things that you want to address in terms of uh, this has much larger lower control arms than the stuff that we use on some of the older hot rod chassis that frankly aren't as heavy and used for that as much. Right. Um, larger bushings, larger ball joints, upper A arms, same thing. One of the great features on this is the new Willwood spindle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that was a new updated piece compared to the old Willwood 2 spindle. So this is a heavier duty version just for the truck? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's much heavier duty. It, Basically, it's a replacement for their C10, mm -hmm. uh, more or less, but with some features of modern design that are really great. Integrated hub and bearing assembly, all sealed bearing assembly, uh, forged aluminum, and just beefier than heck, which you can just see looking at it. Absolutely, and one of the advantages of this mounting point is to change the offset of the wheel or the backspace in the wheel, is that correct? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. With a narrower track width, you can get that more traditional little bit of dish on the wheel yeah. as opposed to sometimes with a low ride height you end up with a you know no dish on the wheel which sure. was which was one of the goals uh, that makes sense a um, couple other features on it um, this upper control arm mounting point really was a big emphasis so this is all 4130 mm -hmm. just really really stout again it's all about cornering forces and wide tires sure you know those are kind of the highlights of the of the front end Right, and of course you get the standard Detroit Speed rack on there, just like all your other chassis yep. are supplied with. Um, yep. Motor mounts to accommodate for your small block, big block Chevy, LS and LT motors. Small block or big block, bolt right in, usually close to factory location, so you're not having to modify a tunnel as long as you're not using you know, a big six speed manual or something. It makes for a modular chassis. Sure. One other specific thing that we had to address on these is steering linkage. Um, we took a little different path than, than maybe others have done on that. Uh, we wanted to keep the column in the stock location, how it comes out. So we did, on the frame, install the mount for a bearing to keep the steering angle at a, at a fairly mild angle, not having to do anything crazy on that, because that was, that was actually a bit of an issue on these trucks. So on this one, we're capable of retaining the factory column with the correct adapters going in the factory correct. column. But don't have to modify. Correct. That's, that's great to hear. So it sounds like this whole front suspension has been designed for being capable of carving corners pretty amazing, uh, being track ready, but I assume it also rides and handles amazing too for your everyday Absolutely. casual driving. Absolutely. Really, we have some great partners with shocks. We have a shock dyno, so we check stuff. Um, Strange Engineering has been a great partner for us in terms of setting up some shock valving that quite frankly is made more for the street guy um, we know most guys are not autocrossing these. The capability is there, but for ride quality uh, and, and just modern technology, that's a great shock and that will make for just a good driver, everyday driver. Okay, so let's, let's move on down the chassis here and see some of the other details that you've worked into this one. Obviously this one has some more structure over what the original C10 chassis would have as far as the internal bracing you have in here, the X member. Of course the rear cross member with the half drive shaft loop in there exhaust pass-throughs, a lot of features to make this more structural. Yeah, and there's a lot that goes into that in terms of uh, analysis, stress analysis on the frames, on where to place the cross members. It's, it's really not random, I promise. Okay. <laughs> uh, a lot of thought goes into where to place the cross members. Clearances have to be thought into that in terms of how are you gonna run exhaust through the chassis? How are you gonna mount things like, well, transmission cross members, things like that. So there's a lot that goes into it. But the first and foremost thing is always, like you just said, structure. How do we make the frame stiffer so that the suspension can do its work? That's really the goal. Um, in 1960s, when these frames were designed, probably around 1960 originally, they were designed for the frame to flex. Uh, with the channel design, good ride, that was the thought process back then. Well, we have much better suspension now, so we can make the frame really, really rigid and then let the suspension do its work.
Now, getting past that and moving to the back, I know there's some very unique features that you've added into this as far as the coil or mounting location, how you got it there with this rear frame rail, how you had to bend that to make that all work. Can you explain why you designed it like that? Yeah, and you're right, a lot went into that because really getting the coilovers mounted further out was one of the main goals and keeping a triangulated style suspension. That posed some challenges, the, the combination of the two. The triangulated suspension requires a little bit wider frame rail than a parallel suspension, but it is just the slickest setup that we have. There's a reason we use it on all of our chassis. Excellent cornering, excellent stability, excellent lateral control of the housing, and no pan hard bar. I mean, <laughs> that just makes it really, really nice. And the coilover mounting position, we wanted to get those out a little bit further, again, for cornering. It helps ride, it helps cornering, it's, it's all positive, and it took a little bit to do that. Sure, yeah, I see that very unique bend in there to pull that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, as we move back, it looks like you even incorporated a option for an optional fuel tank mount to mount underneath the bed to take care of the problem. Most of our C10 customers want to move the fuel tank out of the cab and get it somewhere else. So it looks like you've thought of that on this one. Yeah, we, we certainly did. My first vehicle I ever owned was a 69 Chevy truck. Mm -hmm. Gas tank in the back. You put gas in your truck <laughs> and you, you got a, a gasoline high at the time. So right. obviously that needed to be updated. Um, and on, on this chassis, we just had the ability to make it easier for the builder mm -hmm. uh, by incorporating that. So we did that. And then of course, you know, moving all the way back, your bumper brackets are all there, gas tank mounting. Uh, it makes it a bolt-on process. Right, so this is truly a what we consider a bolt-in chassis, but with an exception. It looks like with the initial chassis we have produced, we're gonna have to raise the bed floor some to accommodate for this kick up of the rail. That's correct. Uh, the first version of the chassis that, we, that we're coming out with is a really aggressive low stance. Uh, about six inches off the ground, roughly. It's a really aggressive stance, so yes, we do kick the frame rail up fairly high. It does require raising the bed floor about five to six inches, uh, but to get that look, that's, that's how you do it. And the handling, it really lowers, does a lot to lower the center of gravity, um, which is the main goal, you know. You get the roll centers on the suspension where you want them, uh, lower center of gravity, and all that are just bonuses. Okay. And it looks like we're gonna fit a pretty decent tire on the back of this. Do you happen to know what the tire specifications are approximately, or are we able to fit a 335 tire on yeah. this? You, you can, yeah. you can. You can easily fit with the right tubs, of course. Sure. A 335 tire on the back. Um, heck, in the front with the narrowed track width, kind of honestly sky's the limit. Of course, you may have inner fender modifications for clearance on the inside. Okay, perfect. So accommodate pretty much all the common tires out there on the market as far as getting an aggressive yeah. tire on Yeah, and we do provide that data. That's one thing yes. that we always do is we've got CAD drawings. As I recall, the original wheel tire mock-up that we came up with for this probably had like 305s or 315s on it, front and rear. Right. Um, these trucks just look really good with a wide tire on the front. And I know that's a very valuable tool for us to have that drawing for the tire size. A lot of our customers are looking to know what they can fit under there. So that's a great value to know what will fit in there and knowing the dimensions so the wheels can get ordered at the time chassis gets ordered so everything can come together at the correct time. Yeah, and that's honestly, that's a, a big, big uh, advantage of using our Morrison Enterprises, honestly, is we have an engineering department, that kind of data. Our sales department has a lot of tools for figuring out wheel offsets, tire sizes, ride heights, things like that. Uh, a lot of thought goes into that because it's all in the stance. That's right. a phrase that dates back to the very first tri -five. It's all in the stance, it really is. Sure. Well, Scott, I really appreciate you going over this chassis with us. It's been a very valuable information. We look forward to getting some of these out shop. I know we have some on order and they should be arriving here soon. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks, Matt.